A lot of people are questioning. Rob Gronkowski is getting paid $9 million to be a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Retired for a couple years. Went and did the TV thing. He was a white tiger on Mass Singer. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he fulfilled every prophecy that his agent had when he retired, saying he was going to go on to have a very successful and lucrative off-season or off-field career. He right. did all of those things. He comes back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers after Tom Brady signs out of nowhere with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And Bruce Arians told us that he had no idea – that Gronkowski was going to be available whenever they were courting Tom Brady. When Tom got there, he said, hey, how about Gronk? Boom, makes a move with the Patriots for like a, a ninth-round pick or whatever. He comes down, they pay him $9 million. Now, he has not gotten the ball much. He got an overthrow here. We saw in practice he was catching some balls, making some plays, but he has not been a focal point of the offense. And everybody knows if you watch the New England Patriots, when Rob Gronkowski was on the field, there was a chance he was either going to pancake somebody on a run or he was going to make a ridiculous catch in the nimble clock Clydesdale was going to be able to make a play after he got the ball. We assume the same damn thing because he said he was healthy. His back was healthy. He was rejuvenated. He loves the game again because he got kind of worn out when he was up in New England. If you do recall, he did a press conference for a CBD company where he actually broke down in tears about how his body was so beat up and he didn't love the game as much and all this stuff. Now he's back playing football, not getting the ball as much. Is Rob Gronkowski buying in completely that his role is going to be much different than any other time in his NFL career whenever he's with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I would assume Rob Gronkowski only cares about winning, but whenever his coach comes out and says we're not throwing it 50 times to the tight ends that's what we have receivers for Mm -hmm. I would assume Gronkowski goes yeah I understand that but like I'm considered I was on the NFL top 100 team of all time because I'm not just your basic ass run of the mill tight end from 30 years ago like whenever you started coaching and your offense was created Mr. Arians I am a guy that can change the game both on the in the rush game which he has been doing Mm -hmm. and in the pass game I can get open and make plays like nobody else has ever been able to do in the past I am a game changer I have some of the most iconic tight end catches in the history of the sport I would assume that Rob Gronkowski is potentially thinking a lot of those things but he's not setting those things because as long as they win nobody cares but for me it's like hey BA could you not just say that in a maybe a different way or Bruce Arians doesn't give a single damn if Gronk cares if Tom cares well Tom messed up he missed the thing he did this he did that oh Gronk we have receivers to catch ball we don't need tight end to do it it's like all these things he's saying it's very interesting because a lot of this stuff that's being said publicly was not said by Bill Belichick publicly no. all the stuff that they had problems with allegedly was privately with Bill Belichick so this is a very interesting dynamic that anytime Bruce Arians says anything about Gronk about Tom it's going to be a talking point I would assume Bruce knows that. I would assume Bruce doesn't mean for any of this to be taken in the fashion that a lot of people are taking, including us. Like, oh, this is a little bit offensive because you're saying that Gronk is just a standard tight end, then you're not acknowledging that Gronk is an electric factory in an unbelievable tight end. If he's playing anything like he was playing a couple years ago, we don't know if that's true or not because we haven't really got a taste of what he's been able to do thus far. But it's very interesting to hear these quotes coming out of uh, Tampa Bay, and you have to think about what Tom and Gronk are thinking at this point. You just have to. Yeah, it's my... I would assume that Gronk, who kind of retired because of injuries, didn't come out of that retirement to be a blocking tight end. Like, I figured he thought maybe he'd probably be in the passing game a little bit more. I'm not saying Gronk's going to do this because Gronk probably does care about just care about winning. But, like, is this something or have you been a part of a team where a guy in the locker room isn't getting the ball and isn't part of the offense that it starts maybe to cause a rift in the locker room? No, I've never been. I don't think I've ever been a part of that, to be honest. But, boy, I can see how it happens, though. (laughs) And, And not with tight ends. Wide receivers are a natural uh, greedy bunch. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, we want the ball. Because they can't control when they're getting the ball, and they can't control how much they get paid ultimately because they don't have the – they can't just say, hey, throw the ball to me. They have to get open. A lot of guys feel like they're always open. A lot of guys talk about how I'm not getting the ball as much. You hear these stories kind of linger around, but I was never a part of any of that. Our teams were always like, hey, let's just do whatever we Mm got to do. And we didn't have that many, like – I mean, Reggie, T.Y. at the same time, uh, tight end Kobe, Kobe Fleener, and Dwayne Allen. I guess there was a little bit of conversation because yeah. everybody knew only one of them was going to get an extension, nobody else. But aside from that, you don't ever hear that conversation because if you're winning, nobody get, hey, nobody gives a damn. Yeah. These things are always happening inside, you would think, in conversations around their people. Like, he just said that we, that's what we have wide receivers. Did he not watch any film before he signed <laughs> it? Or, or did Tom just be like, hey, we need Gronk here? And that just was the extent of it because $9 million to a tight end is a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And if you get Gronkowski on your team and he's anywhere near what he was before, why would you not want to utilize that to the benefit? And it's like, well, his offensive system, I guess that's, hey, that's what we got wide receivers for, baby. I mean, what do you want from me? Well, also, he was number one in New England, right? Like, he was by far the best 
football catcher that we had. And in Tampa Bay, Godwin and Evans are both 1,000-yard receivers. So now he really has turned into like a third option. And why would they throw him the ball if he is going to get all this attention in the red zone? I would assume Tom is going to um, try to get him the ball mm-hmm. more than he has the last two because it's a conversation mm-hmm. piece. And Tom probably understands that Gronk is a weapon if we use him as such. But he can draw plays for – like, for instance – Tom Brady told a story on the NFL 100 show with Rich Eisen, Bill Belichick, and I forget who else was at the table. And he talked about how he went down to Tennessee with Peyton Manning, and they were on a lake, and it was just those two having like a QB summit. And he said Peyton taught him this one particular protection where a guard would pull, and it looked like it was a run play, and they'd play action, and then they would slip Dallas Clark down the seam, basically, and he was wide open because it was they, it was such a hard sell on the run that it left the tight end wide open behind the linebackers that were biting on it or whatever. And he drew up the play for him, basically showed him film of it. And the Patriots used that against the Colts oh, the yeah. next year. And Tom Brady said something like, I think Gronk scored 100 touchdowns with this one simple play design. Like, that's a play design that is designed specifically to open your tight end wide open. Like, that is what the play design's for. So I would assume there are some things that either Gronk's thinking, like, hey, you know, we did this. This worked a lot. Or maybe Tom's even thinking or other people are thinking. And it's just it's very interesting because that's not B.A.'s offense. So it's like, what are you going to – I don't know. It's very interesting because if Gronk doesn't start getting the ball, you would think, like, why wouldn't you? But if they keep winning, nobody will talk about it. Nobody will care. This will be something we talk in the offseason if they don't win a Super Bowl. It's like, well, they did have Gronk, and they chose not to use him. It's obviously super early and probably too early to tell. And like you said, if they end up winning, then it doesn't really matter. But do you think any part of Brady kind of feels hoodwinked? Like getting down there, and he's like, I don't know. what the fuck, man? I didn't think I was going to be taking this much shit the first two <laughs> weeks of the season. Tom getting married publicly. Gronk's getting married publicly. Yes. What are we doing down here? I think all Tom cares about is winning. Mm-hmm. He's probably only focused on winning. How do we win right now? But all that's is the reflection period after the season right you know, when yeah. you look back and mm-hmm. you know like could this been different could this been different I, they got a lot of time to grow too by the way yeah there's also a chance Gronk's a step slower and he's really just there to be a decoy they got a lot of whoa I mean, see we don't know if that's true or not no, no we don't. Oh, but we, we don't, don't if we don't know if it's not true i mean it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great way it's very very true i mean <laughs> 